Hello Internet, my name is David Baugh, and today we're going to be talking about storyboarding your screenplay. Alright friends, it's time to jump into our storyboard, and let me start by saying that this is something that I've been both looking forward to and dreading for a while. It's certainly a lot of work, but it is infinitely useful. It, it's just a super powerful outlining tool, and I wanted to show you guys. Now there are a few schools of thought here pertaining to this, and I'm going to show you with some graphics because I figured it would be easier to show you visually and convey all the information in a reasonable timeline. But when I was starting out, I used index cards. I did it all by hand. I, I still have the index card somewhere. I've written five feature films plus countless short films, and I, I'm intimately familiar with exactly what it takes to finish a script. I would recommend for your first time that you overdo it and, you know, really put in the work on this stuff because it's going to help you immensely. Trust me, you don't want to just jump headlong into a feature film script without your pre-work. It's like a beautiful woman. You have to warm her up first. You have to take her time and love every inch of her until she's just begging for it. <clears throat> Let's just say the more work that you put into it, the better it's going to be for you. The gist of this is that you're going to make a card for every scene that takes place in your movie and you're going to outline it so that you know exactly what will happen in each scene and you can reference that, that later. Every card should tell us whether we're inside or outside, abbreviated INT or EXT. It should tell us what location it's going to be set in. It should have the time of day so that we can tell generally when things are happening. It should also have a general description of each scene, similar to a log line that you wrote initially, but this time for every scene that's going to take place in your movie. Write it down on each card all the way through. You should also establish who is a conflict with whom and what the end goal of the scene is going to be. Now that you've seen the card, it's time to talk about how to structure them together to make a feature film script. It's generally held true that the average feature length movie is going to have around 40 to 60 scenes in it. I tend to try and write short and then fill it out later with future revisions, so I aim for the bottom number and then add to it if I need to with chase scenes and things like that. The end result being that you would have 40 cards in 4 rows of 10. The first act being the first row, the second act being the next 20 cards, since that's where the meat of the story is taking place, and then the final row is going to be the third act. Now 40 blank spaces on a board can seem like a pretty intimidating task when you're first starting it out, but we've reached a point where we can start to pull from our past successes, break out that treatment that we did before, and we can fill in those 15 scenes here. Now we only have 25 scenes left to go, and we're off to a good start. You can see visually what we're missing and what we have already. We know where we begin and where we end. We know our midpoint and the scenes where we're going to have a major changeover into the second act. We see where we meet our B story, where our fun and games picks up. Quite a bit, really. There are still some gaps in our goals and we can just slowly chip away at that until every card is filled in exactly the way that we want it. You can mix and match, you can move cards from one spot to another, you can move your scenes around as you see fit, you can even throw away a card and start over. It's super easy to utilize your script from this point on. Beginning with the first act, you know that that's going to be the setup of the premise generally. We also know that the second act is going to be where the meat of our story takes place. We know that the fun and game section is going to take up most of that second row. We know that the third row, things are generally going to be a little bit more difficult for him and then on the last row he's going to have his epic battle with the antagonist and one way or the other the movie is going to end there so we can start to fill in scenes that are along those lines we can start just knocking it out now, I wouldn't have time to show you every single card here, but if you visit my website at www.dbawcherry.com, then you can see exactly what I'm going to do for my feature film, and I'll lay it all out for you there. I will also go into more detail in my blog about an easier way to accomplish the same things and reap similar benefits to this method and get the same place in the end. I just figured it would be a little more boring to show you a wall of text than, you know, a simple graphic, but feel free to check that out. Once we've gotten the last of the cards in place and we know generally what time of day it is and whether we're inside or outside, I like to add a list of characters that will be in the scene so that I'm not dropping characters at the wrong time or just 
not planning for characters that needed to be there so I don't have to fix as much later. If you were doing this by hand, you could color code each character differently so that you know who's in each scene. You could just make it as simple as a dot on the page or you can make a graphic this way. It doesn't matter. Whatever floats your boat, everybody's going to do this step differently and you want it to be, you know, reminiscent of what your story is going to be. Being that this movie deals with possession of sorts, I chose to color mine based on who is possessed and who's not in each scene so that I know, generally speaking, throughout the script, how the story is progressing. The last step that I tend to take is that I like to add ups and downs to each scene. I know that I want my movie to be a roller coaster ride of sorts, so I plan for that. You don't typically make songs by hitting the same note on the piano over and over and over again, and I want to make sure that I'm changing it up in appropriate times. I don't want anything to get too boring. I establish exactly where I want each scene going, and it forces me to reanalyze the script as a whole, establish on every card why something is good or bad and who is causing those things to take place. Um, I generally start off by going from a negative to a positive. It generally is also in line with the conflict that I wrote on the cards before. The main character's life generally sucks at the beginning, so I tend to start off with a negative to a positive. You can start off from a positive to a negative, it doesn't matter. In the next scene, I want to carry over that emotion, so if I did a positive to a negative, then I would do a negative to a positive change in the next scene. I would go all the way through my cards, so on and so forth, until all 40 tell me exactly which up and down is going to take place in which you can make this as complicated or as simple as you would like it to be it could be as easy as oh i bumped my toe that's a negative thing and but i won the lottery hooray any anything you want really you just go through it and you establish what it's going to be even if you don't use this in the end you're going to be happy that you spent the time thinking about it in these terms now that it's done, we can see all laid out and tell exactly what our script is going to be. We can rearrange these cards if we need to. We can, you know, pick it up from there, change things over. We know that the beginning of the movie is going to start off with everyone okay. It looks like scene three, the dog disappears, comes back in scene 11 to take Johnny, who's gone in scene 12, but comes back in scene 13, so on and so forth until the end, where we have a new girl that's fundamentally changed by the transformation that took place in our in our movie. We can tell at a glance that most of the movie takes place in the cabin. We have a few things happening in the morning, but it tells us a lot about what we're going to be doing and it allows us to plan for those things to take place. So this is the last step in our pre-writing process. Next week we're going to be getting into the actual writing mechanics and we'll move on from there. But for now, my friends and confidants, it was a pleasure as always and you have a wonderful evening. Hello Internet, my name is David Baugh and I wanted to talk to you today about the start of something new.